Hello Ice and Fire nerds, this is Chris and welcome back to another Game of Thrones Season 7 video. We got a new teaser trailer today called The Walk. So what I want to do is do a little bit different. I'm going to take a look at the trailer with you guys and I'll pause it intermittently to kind of talk about what I see there and see if we can break this damn thing down and find some stuff in it. Also before we get started, if you dig what I do here, please give this video a like and a share. Really appreciate it and be sure to subscribe to get everything. A lot more Game of Thrones stuff is going to be coming obviously as we're breaking into teaser and trailer season. Get hype because winter is fucking here. All right, so let's jump right in and check this damn thing out and see if we can pull anything from it. Let's break it down. All right, so I'll pause it right here just for a second. And obviously here we have the three powers of Restoros. We have John, Danny, and Cersei making the walk to their individual thrones here. So right off the bat, it's setting up the theme of the three biggest players. Now, obviously there's a couple people missing here, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so as I was saying, you got the three players here. Obviously you have Cersei and King's Landing at the Red Keep heading towards her throne. You have Danny on Dragonstone, which is very, very important because this is the house ancestral seat of House Targaryen. So this is going to kind of be a repeat of history, so to speak, as far as Danny coming to Dragonstone and engaging the Seven Kingdoms from there, like her ancestor Aegon the Conqueror did. And you also have kind of the dynamic as well with Aegon and his two sister wives, you know, basically a king and two queens. And in this case, they're showing immediately a king and two queens as well. So that's kind of a cool parallel as well for a little bit of backstory and history from the books. And I'm digging the music, by the way. All right, so again, we see John heading into Winterfell, the main hall in Winterfell there. Obviously, that's not a glamorous seat. We have uh, Danny heading into Dragonstone, which I'm very excited about Dragonstone this year. This actually confirms that Danny will have her own throne on Dragonstone. I'm sure we'll see the... Uh, table as well the Aegon the Conqueror car the one we saw Stannis hanging around quite a bit in, in seasons past all right and there it is Danny sitting on her throne there in Dragonstone this is going to be Dragonstone obviously with the rock card behind her Dragonstone is basically carved out of the rock around it the mountain around it so to speak so it's a badass looking place anyway with all kinds of gargoyles and shit and of course there used to be dragons there there's also a lot of dragon glass there remember Stannis said that back in season five Okay, cool. So we saw Danny sit down. We saw Cersei already on the Iron Throne and we saw Jon standing there. So that's pretty interesting in and of itself because what you have here is you have Danny actually, we see her in the act of sitting on her throne. So I think that represents what she wants to do with the Iron Throne of Westeros. You have Cersei already there and that represents her already being there obviously on the Iron Throne. Although she doesn't have a lot of power like she thinks she does, the only reason she really does is because she's already holed up in King's Landing, and anytime somebody's trying to take a castle, obviously the person already inside the castle has the advantage because of walls. But of course, that is a little bit different in Danny's case because she has fucking dragons. But I think that's really interesting here that they show that, and then of course John is actually just standing there. I don't think he actually sat down, so it shows you that Cersei has the power. She's already on her particular throne. Danny is sitting on her throne. We actually see her do that, so she wants the power. And John looks to be like leaning over the table like in season six when he got elected king in the north in the first place because he doesn't want any of that. He just wants to unite the seven kingdoms for the wars to come. And also, I'm already digging the uh, the kind of the dark theme of this. You got everybody in their cool black clothes. I love Cersei's black dress. I love Danny's new black dress. And John's looking all regal, of course, as well. But the way they did this with them on their thrones, where you actually see Danny sitting, you see Cersei already sitting, and John basically just standing there. It kind of shows you Danny's intent, Cersei's intent of keeping the chair, and John's intent of talking these two queens into fighting the real war to come. All right, and we also got the candles going out here. Definitely a darker theme, you know, with the black dresses. They all look badass. But the uh, the candles going out is probably a good thing because, you know, these people live to be probably about 30 or 40 years old because of carbon monoxide poisoning.
All right, so we see Cersei exhale and we see the cold breath. This reminds me of Danny's visions in the House of the Undying. This could be a little hint of what's to come because obviously we saw in Danny's visions she walked in the Red Keep. It was obviously snowing in there, so winter had already come to King's Landing in her vision, and the roof was burnt out due to dragon fire more than likely. But I don't think that's going to happen as far as the dragon fire part. But it's really interesting why they show Cersei only with the breath there as opposed to say John or Danny because for example John's in Winterfell in this teaser at least but what we see here is Cersei's breath going cold and of course that reminds you of the scene from season six when Mira had to save Bran she saw her own breath she saw Bran's breath and Hodor's and realized the Night King was right outside the door so what could that mean could that tell us that Cersei's going to die in season seven perhaps late in season seven or you know she's always wanted to be queen maybe she's the one that becomes the Night Queen hmm yeah 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 a lot of us think that Danny could perhaps become this new Knight's Queen, which is a tale from the books about the 13th Lord Commander, if you're not familiar with that, and how he took a other woman, a White Walker, for his bride and became the Knight's King in the books, as opposed to the Night King in the show. And uh, that would be damn interesting if Cersei becomes a White Walker. She would get what she wanted, she'd become Queen, but not quite in the way she thought. All right, and then you have the Night King eye. This is very similar to the teaser they dropped a few weeks ago with the little Night King eye there where a lot of people speculated this would be a dragon eye or something, but it's clear here you can see this is the Night King. This is what the theme of the whole thing's about. So uh, obviously this is the Night King here. If you compare it to the picture of the close-up of his face here when he came into Bloodraven's cave last year, a lot of people had said already in tweets earlier they thought it could be 1-1 one -one or a giant because of the nose. But if you look here, they've changed the Night King every damn year. They've shown him, basically, and it does look like the Night King from last year. And that's obviously the theme of this thing anyway. you got two people struggling over power. you got one guy, John, who is trying to warn everybody about the coming true threat. And then, of course, you have the true threat here at the end, showing Cersei with the cold breath and then showing the Night King directly. So that's just the theme of this damn thing anyway. So basically what you got going on here is a little repeat of history as far as the War of the Five Kings. Now, interestingly enough, they showed... The three powerhouses in Westeros, that would be John, Danny, and Cersei. And then, of course, the Night King at the end, and that would make four. But they left out Euron, so you could take a couple things from that as well. Euron may not be a big deal in the show. I've been saying that for the past few months. I don't think he's going to be that big of a deal in the show. I think he'll be around a while, but he's obviously going to team up with Cersei. So it could be simply they left him out because he's going to have some kind of alliance with Cersei, and he kind of represents that team anyway. And Cersei's not going to have that anyway, no matter what kind of alliance she talks about. She's certainly not going to follow up on it and actually marry Euron regardless. And Euron doesn't want her to live either because he wants it all for himself. So he's not just going to be content with marrying Cersei and having her as a queen and in power when they both want it for themselves. So if they happen to strike up an alliance, you can bet your ass they're going to try to betray each other anyway. So basically what you have here again is kind of a repeat of the War of the Five Kings when you have Danny, John, Cersei, the Night King, and Euron involved if you want to say that. Although you do have a couple of queens this time. But the point being here is the stakes are a lot higher this time because they're all battling over the Iron Throne and their petty politics and squabbles. The big picture here is this time the stakes are a little bit higher because if the Night King wins the whole Game of Thrones here, then mankind ceases to exist. And his job, of course, in Season 7 is to convince the other two that the guy at the end there with the blue eyes is coming their way and it doesn't matter what their damn name is, what their damn sigil is. He's going to bring the damn storm. So anyway, guys, that's all I have. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon Smokestream producers, Hall Griffin, Volga 10, Lala Gig, Kisa Powell, Marilyn Bentley, Mark Joseph, a.k.a. The Snow and Winterfell, Joanna, and Sean Hayes. Thank you guys so much. And also a shout out to everyone out there in YouTube land. I really appreciate all the support. Be sure to subscribe to get everything and make sure you click that notification bell as well so you're notified when I drop a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Dracarys.